What's up guys, today we are going to be talking about DNS Benchmark. This is a free to use and download program. Uh, I will have a link in the video description below for it. Um, I'm not going to get into what DNS is. Uh, I'm not. That's just way too much time and effort and energy. So I'm just going to show you how the program works and how to set up uh, the custom DNS that DNS Benchmark tells you you should be using. So we've got our DNS Benchmark program here, and all we do is hit Run Benchmark. Now this is going to take a little while, so I'm probably going to speed up this part of the video. All right, it looks like it's done. And uh, up here we have what it currently considers to be the best uh, DNS uh, for me to choose from. Obviously up here is these two. Um, now these are not the DNS that I have currently selected. Uh, that's because I ran Benchmark uh, months ago and these two were the best ones at the time. And it looks like it's probably just time for me to update my current DNS, preferred DNS and alternate DNS servers. Um, so all you do is, based on this information here, you would choose some of these. Uh, it's a good idea to usually put Google as either your main one or an alternate, just because it's freaking Google. I mean, of course it's going to be a good DNS, and it's Google, so you can trust them to more or less have good equipment, basically. Uh, whereas currently the best one, based on the current benchmark, says that I should go with Charter. I don't really like Charter. I really don't. So I'm not going to go with them. I might try these guys out. Uh, NTT America Inc. That one might be good. But anyway. Once you've chosen which uh, DNS's you want to use, you come over here to your uh, network connections in your network and sharing uh, center, right click which uh, ethernet adapter is yours, click properties, go to these uh, properties here. You're gonna open up internet protocol version four, click properties. And down here, you're just gonna type in those DNS addresses just like this. Very simple to do. And um, now this won't give you a drastic change in your network performance, but if you were having issues before connecting to certain different um, websites, like sometimes websites will put a region lock, but they'll do a poor region lock. You know, a poor man's region lock is based on DNS. So if you use a DNS that they determine is like a worldwide one or a DNS that is specific to their region, then they'll let you in. Uh, also, as you can see, based on the information here, since this one has the best time, uh, response time, if I chose that one, it would return me uh, internet queries faster than any of the other ones. But we're talking about fractions of a fraction of a fraction of a second. Uh, so in the long run, it doesn't really matter that much. This is more or less if you really, really, really want to get down into the guts of your network and just really set it up the way you want. So that's my free software tip for today. Now let's get into 
and paid options. So today's paid option that we're going to be looking at is exit lag. Now I've been playing around with exit lag for almost a month now, and I gotta say, it's nice. It is probably the best one that I've ever tried. I've tried WT Fast, I've tried Ping Zapper, I've tried Battle Ping, I've tried No Ping, and now that I've tried Exit Lag, I think Exit Lag is the best one. I think it is. Uh, and not just for Ping. It has a lot of other extra features in it that I really like. Alright, so now that we're in, we're going to go, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Tools, go to General. Make sure Optimize Automatically is selected, because obviously we want it to select the best possible server, rather than go through uh, the, the process of painstakingly figuring out which routing is best for us manually. We'll let the uh, program do it for us. Uh, you want the Accuracy in Route Optimization all the way up to the maximum. Now this proxy protocol 2, this is meant as a network stabilizer. This is not meant to further lower your ping, it is meant to make sure that your ping goes low but then stays kind of low so it doesn't fluctuate a lot. Uh, now you may or may not have issues with this, I personally have tried it and I like it I, I noticed that my ping is a little bit more stable with it on, so I'm using it. Now, this is where things get interesting. Come over here to FPS Boost. A couple of things you're going to want to use. Define maximum processing priority for games. That basically means that any game that you run through exit lag has a higher uh, CPU priority than any other program. And for those of you who know what you're doing, you can set that manually in Task Manager, or you can just let Exit Lag do it for you. No problem. Uh, define minimum processing priority for system services. That means that as soon as the game starts, uh, it will set non-essential processes to a low priority, so that you have more processing power for your game. Uh, this run games on dedicated core that means that it will set the processor affinity for that game to the very first physical core, core zero. I've tried it, and depending on your setup, it might be good for you. For me, it ended up not being a good choice, so I turned it off. Disable hyperthreading. This is a very good one. You want to disable hyperthreading. What this is going to do is rather than allow your game to run on virtual cores it's only going to run your game on the actual physical cores on your computer on your chip uh disable core parking that's obviously we want to disable core parking because parking uh will throttle down your uh cpu performance uh based on a software determined algorithm whatever don't do that we just want it to use maximum performance all the time. Disable NTFS last access update. Now this, I only know a little bit about this option, but what I do know is that it, it consumes network bandwidth and processing power. So obviously we're going to want to turn that off. Uh, disable Windows performance counters. Yes, we want that on. We do want to leave Windows Defender on because obviously we don't want to be unprotected. So. We're going to leave that on. And now we're going to go back to home. We're going to choose our game. Under game region, we choose our, our server. Now, the game Blade and Soul, which is the game that I'm currently playing, only uses TCP uh, packets. It does not use UDP. It only uses TCP protocol. So we're not going to select any UDP routes. What we want to do is select between two and three TCP routes here. And the reason for that is because the way it works is one route is your connection from your computer to the game server. Two routes is your connection plus another connection both going to the game server. So if one connection goes down, the other one will pick up the slack. This is a redundancy to make sure that you don't disconnect. You don't want to have 
a whole bunch of TCP routes going at the same time because it's just going to oversaturate your network and you're going to have lag and just horrible ping. Don't do that. I recommend just two. You don't need, really need any more. Uh, if you experience any DC disconnect issues, increase it to three, maybe four. I don't recommend going any higher than that. Uh, after that, all you do is click Optimize, and it's going to do all the work for you. And that's really great because some of the other programs that we've tried in the past have required you to set up a whole lot of stuff, and it's very time consuming, and a lot of the average users aren't going to know what they're doing. So this thing just does it all for you. So now, as you can see, we have Atlanta 56 and Atlanta, it has determined that these two routes are the best possible routes that it can choose. Where it says 16 MS plus 21 MS, what this means is from my computer to the routing server node that exit lag has chosen, which is Atlanta 56, has a ping of 16 MS. Now from there, from that server node to the actual game server is 21. So when you combine these two numbers together, you get your final in-game ping. So this is what we have here. Uh, and there's our secondary route in case of disconnect. Um, and all you do is hit apply route, and you're done. That's it. Go play your game. It's that easy. I, I really don't have anything else to say about it. it it's super easy, very user-friendly, and it just, it just works. So, uh, yeah, feel free to go try it out. They've got a uh, three-day free trial as well on their website, so you don't have to put in any credit card information or anything. Just go try it. If you like it, buy it. If you don't like it, just uninstall it. Do whatever you want to do. I, I, I think it's great, and I think if you try it, you'll probably like it. And uh, I guess I really need to find some other free program for you guys to try next time I make a new video. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give the like button some love, and don't forget to subscribe.